The State Assembly is working on some new legislation that would re-examine police de-escalation tactics. Assembly Bill 66 aims to create standards for how and when law enforcement agencies can use rubber bullets and pepper spray. Well, today a group of police brutality victims voiced their opinions on this bill during a virtual meeting. We have peaceful protests. We had a number of protests all across our state. Uh, bystanders, students, young and old, health care professionals, reporters uh, were seriously injured for doing what is the, you know, American tradition, their First Amendment right to stand up in the streets and, and share their views. And uh, innocent people should not be uh, attacked by law enforcement for doing what is their First Amendment right. On May 29th, I was shot in the face with a rubber bullet. I am now permanently blind in my left eye. Um, not only am I blind, I have a brain injury, which causes me to forget things and mix up my words. Uh, these rubber bullets have seriously injured, disabled, and have even killed people. These are not less lethal methods, um, not to me and to the many others that have been injured or disabled by them. Um, the practice of law enforcement to indiscriminately shoot these less lethal arms into crouch which unnecessarily risk hitting people in the face, need to be banned. So the bill would also ban the use of tear gas as a form of crowd control. And joining us now to talk about Assembly Bill 66 is the board president of San Diego Police Officers Association, Jack Schaefer. Jake, good to talk to you. What are your thoughts on uh, this uh, bill? Well, I think there's some things in the bill that um, are probably um, needed, especially in some parts of the state, including probably San Diego. Um, I think that it uh, requires, which um, I believe that any time that force is used, it should be documented um, what was used, how much of whatever it was was used, and how effective it was, and any possible injuries. So there are some parts of the bill that I think are, um, are help, would be helpful. Um, I don't think that we should indiscriminately be able to um, deploy any of these uses of force. Um, but, but then again, um, a lot of these incidents that I'm hearing about um, that um, they're calling uh, peaceful protests um, weren't exactly peaceful protests. And, and we do need to have some ability. So there is a balance that's needed um, to be able to keep people from looting and hurting people and, and uh, possibly you know, burning buildings. On, on the 31st of May, um, downtown San Diego probably would have had large buildings on fire if not for the use of some of these um, um, instruments. So the bill would prohibit the use of projectiles or chemical agents to disperse any assembly, protest, or demonstration. What would that do to law enforcement's ability to, to maybe do what they need to do? Would that be okay? Could you still do your job without these projectiles and without the use of these chemical agents? Well, it depends on the type of protest and the type of action that's happening. If it, if it becomes really violent like it did in La Mesa and like it did the following night in San Diego, um, we need to have some way to, um, to maybe uh, cause people to, to, to disperse um, if they're, if they're uh, violently coming at our lines of officers or, or, or coming at people or buildings or whatever it might be that they have in mind. We have to have some type of measures where we can stop that, um, and especially um, in ways that, that generally aren't going to do um, much damage. It's usually mostly an irritant. Um, and mostly something that's more of an annoyance and a, a little bit of pain. But, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, let me be clear that absolutely, if, if, if you're, um, um, you know, protesting in the right way, um, you know, nonviolently doing, um, vo you know, voicing your opinion and all that stuff, I believe that those things should be protected and those people should never be harmed. Um, but that wasn't exactly what happened um, on much of that weekend and, and some other weekends. And so we have to have those, the ability when it does become non-peaceful to be able to step in because um, not only are we trying to keep the officers safe, but everybody who's in that crowd, um, unfortunately, a lot of the violent people like to stand behind peaceful people because they kind of know that then, then they can kind of use them as a shield. And, um, but we have to be able to disperse people and part of that is, I mean, we have to give the warnings, have to let them know that, hey, you, this is an unlawful assembly. Um, but we, we give plenty of that. Um, and so we, we do have to have those um, abilities. Otherwise, I don't know how our officers could be expected to 
um, keep people from just, you know, taking over and destroying the city and hurting people. We just heard from the woman on the Zoom call. She's the grandmother in La Mesa. Uh, she was hit between the eyes with one of these rubber projectiles. Uh, we showed our viewers videos back when it happened. It appears as though she might have thrown something towards officers and then a law enforcement officer uses the projectile with a shotgun and, and it hits her right between the eyes, essentially. Um, I mean, I, I was going to try not to give you some specific examples to talk about, but that's one of those ones where you think, well, okay, she threw something, yes, but does that still mean that she should be shot between the eyes with a rubber bullet? I mean, certainly could have killed her probably. So, I mean, how do you look at that situation and try to balance what, what law enforcement needs in order to control an unruly crowd and on the other hand, maybe, maybe, maybe using less than that kind of force? Yeah, I mean, I think that first of all, officers need to be accountable for the, for the things that they do. Um, normally, those um, you know kinetic energy projectiles are designed to be like under the navel type of uh, aim points, uh, trying to hit somebody in their lower extremities. Um, now, I don't know. Sometimes things get away. Um, sometimes they deflect. I don't know exactly what happened in this case. I don't even think it was rubber bullet. I think it might have been a beanbag, um, the one that uh, I, I saw Lorena Gonzalez's. Uh, um, <clears throat> little forum that, the, that she had this morning, if that's the one you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that every time any force is used, it needs to be documented. It needs to be justified. Um, so, I mean, we need to be held to the same standard as, as, uh, as any time we use force. But I think if used properly, um, all of these tools can be very effective in um, making sure that things don't get out of hand. Jack Schaefer with the San Diego Police Officers Association. Thanks for the time. Appreciate it, Jack. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And that brings us to the Your Voice question of the day. We asked on all of our social media platforms, what do you think about this proposed legislation? Well, Todd's first up, and he says, vote her out already. What the heck is wrong with the voting population in the state? How can you be content with this stuff and keep voting for these people? Emily says, this has to be a joke. Do not let her touch anything. Do not let her pass anything until they repeal AB5. Kurt says, take away the tools the police use to break up riots. Wow, she's a few cards shy of a full deck. Curtis says, what does she know about law enforcement and use of deadly force? Now she's going to tell police officers when and how to defend themselves? She is dangerous to law enforcement.